I don't know, man. All right, what's up, guys, and welcome back to Fab Unofficial. All jokes aside, we had a bomb dropped on us this morning. Well, my morning. Uh, I think it was 5 p.m. Eastern, so majority of you, if you're in the U.S., it would have been your evening. Uh, but for me, I've had the entire day to sort of digest this, and to, I, I honestly don't know what to think. Uh, I teased it in my last video that we were waiting on an announcement from James White, and we know that if James White's putting his name to something, an article on Fab TCG, it doesn't happen that often, so it had to be big, and it was huge. I can't remember the last time we saw an announcement that will have this sort of impact on the game as a whole, let alone uh, CC and Blitz. So um, I've pulled it up here. Obviously, surprise, it was a banned and restricted announcement coming early. Uh, and again, normally, well, I guess more recently, we've seen Brian Gottlieb write these, but this is coming from James White himself. And I'm not going to touch on everything in this article. I'm going to jump ahead and, and you know, we're going to talk about the cards that are seeing bans. Uh, but what James writes in this is awesome, and you should definitely check it out. Uh, he goes into the design philosophies and principles, and these are the original ones, how it was, and he talks about how they've changed um, now that they have five years of learnings under their belt, um, and you know how the direction of the game is going from here and where they want things to sit, and you know the sort of the new pillars for the game. So it's all really good stuff. You should definitely read it. But we are going to jump down here because holy hell, uh, the following cards are banned in Classic Constructed and Blitz effective September 9th, 2024. So that date is post Tampa, I believe. So uh, at the world premiere this weekend, all the side events are still going to be with all of these cards legal, I think, unless I'm getting my dates mixed up, but uh, I'm pretty sure that's the case. Number one, Art of War. I'm going to come out and say it. I was obviously wrong. I thought there was no way we would see an Art of War ban mainly because of the secondary market, right? Art of War is one of, next to Sink Below, or was, I should say, the most sought after Judge Cold Foil on the market, close to a thousand NZD um, and multiple hundreds of US dollars each. And I just didn't see them axing that card, especially since we've seen it in the format with the likes of Chain and so on. So, but yeah. I was wrong. I, I don't have too much to talk about with Art of War. I didn't think they were going to ban it, but I definitely think the game as a whole is going to be better without it. So honestly happy to see that go. And James touches on each of the cards down here. Um, notably, which I want to point out, is here where you know he talks about why some people may be wondering why Blood Rush Bellow is okay, but not Art of War. And effectively, it comes down to that art of war is a generic, right? So as we've seen more cards printed and as they continue to print more cards, art of war is accessible by any hero and any combination of cards, whereas Blood Rush Bellow is, as he puts it, siloed to only brute heroes. So there you go. Art of war, not okay, and is gone. Bonds of ancestry. Now, we already knew the yellows and blues were banned, but... This takes Bonds of Ancestry as a card, all colors off the table in both Classic Constructed and Blitz, which, yeah, I mean, I'm not a ninja player, to be honest. I don't really care that this card is gone. I thought that if they were to band out of war, they could maybe leave Bonds. But again, they talk about down here uh, on live streams, at Proto Amsterdam and subsequent callings that uh, Zen was able to present offensive overlaps that are beyond agency thresholds that they're happy with and ultimately it was all enabled by Bonds of Ancestry read often without Heart of War which was enough to see it go I'm happy with that for Zen I feel sorry for Katsu players um, obviously this means that Dishonor gets a kind of perma ban I guess as well because it required bonds of ancestry to be in the combat chain I think the only way you can now pull off a dishonor is by giving a card a different name so 
I don't know the ins and outs of how you would do that, but, uh, you know, I'm feeling for the Katsu players out there. <laughs> my, uh, you know, my heart goes out to you, but Bonds of Ancestry gone. Now, these other cards, this is where we're catching strays. Okay, um, cash in. James literally says, not a problem now, but as gold becomes more prevalent, the cost to draw two cards becomes lower and lower. Makes sense, but damn, you know, I don't know how the hell I'm going to find an excuse to play my Marvel Crown of Dominion now. Uh, Orihon of the Mystic Tenants, again, they talk about this card and how, when designing it, you could already see their thought process with these sort of, you know, card advantage, card advantage enablers in the fact that this was legendary and that they were basically happy with it except the card that actually broke it was 12 petal kasaya and as that card was developed and went through its changes it turns out that they really want a lot of these cards to be like 2.33 cards for three so you're not getting a full card value but uh, when you're transcending and getting an extra resource from 12 petal kasaya this just became a two for three which you know is not the root they're going anymore uh, so that's you know catching strays and then the tomes like LSS are just blowing libraries up all over Wraith uh, Tome of Aetherwind card barely saw any play anyway Tome of Definity this is you know big implications for Prism we did see various builds playing this card it was integral for parts of the arclight sentinel loop so you know to be honest i hated that loop uh, ever since i stopped playing prism myself when i was playing it i loved it but tome of divinity gone tome of the firebrand again this card gone it is specific to con to draconic but uh, if you've watched some of my other videos and lss alluded here we will be revisiting volcor and we will be getting more draconic cards and as the draconic card pool expands tome of firebrand becomes easier and easier to pull off and fulfill the requirements but then tome of firendell this was like up there with blossoming spell later as my favorite card in fab it was obviously the first point of call whenever a new set dropped for me it was like can i fit this card into my deck can i enable extra action points is there a reason to gain life and i was actually super excited with this in combination with florian um obviously we've seen the majestic that makes rune chance equal to the life you've gained this turn uh first card that came to my mind was tome of Fyandel. but again james talks about tome of Fyandel down here is the original draw two printed all the way back in welcome to wraith um, and he says in many ways it's what card draw should look like it consumes an action point uh, but the problem is it's a gen generic same with art of war is that as the card pool expands um, as they explore new design space they can envision term of Findel being problematic and the truth is like even with lightning um, heroes coming up and access to channel thunderstep and so on and so forth term of Findel can be a card that's going to cause huge huge problems so yeah goodbye tomes uh i guess flesh and blood heroes from here on out will not be well read um i really my thoughts on these bands is kind of developing and i don't expect it to settle really for a couple days but all in all I feel pretty positive about this I would have been really worried if they'd have targeted specific cards and not others and opened up you know routes for some heroes to be able to have these huge spike turns and others this is a clear concise direction it's well written well articulated um, like I said definitely go read the article James explains everything way better than I am but like basically any card advantage enablers that you're not having to jump through hoops for or you're able to cheat or they expect to become easier and easier to pull off as the couple expands they're gone um, they do talk about noticeable absences on the list three of a kind tome of harvest tome of arc knight tome of imperial flame basically that they have natural limiters on them for like tome of harvest obviously going into rosetta the fact that it requires you 
to put a card from your arsenal on the bottom means you can't play multiple of them. So it's not going to lead to these huge, huge spike turns where you can play multiple Tome of Harvest, Tome of the Arcanite. There's a randomness to it, um, which they're happy with, and Tome of Imperial Flame imposes a high deck construction burden. Obviously, you need to be royal. And I guess this is the reason why uh, I'm going to be playing my uh, Crown of Dominion, if ever. But yeah, outside of a few Phoenix Flame interactions that currently exist, there's not really a way to garner too much pure card advantage from Tome of Imperial Flame. So uh, they're happy with those. And I do find it funny one card they don't talk about is Tome of Torment. But again, that's a draw one for a card that you've probably taken a life for unless you're playing Chain and LL. And it doesn't provide action points. I have go again. So um Again, I think it's going to fit in this category with three of a kind, Tome of Harvest and Tome of Art Night. But there we go. We're entering, entering a new age of flesh and blood. I, for one, am excited. I think we're going to get back to the core of what flesh and blood is and was when I first fell in love with the game. Incremental advantage over many turns. You're going to be able to build a game plan around, you know, four five card turn cycles um, hey maybe we even see pitch deck and come back but yeah only time will tell uh, obviously let me know your thoughts down in the comments I'm really keen to what you know to hear about how people are reacting to this news and what their thoughts are um, where to from here uh, my favorite thing from this announcement is that I feel like I'm going into Rosetta with a clean slate, which is exciting. So, yeah, interested to see what people do with this um, and what the chatter is over the next couple of days. But until next time, guys, catch you later.